Angola has effectively taken number one position. Correct. I've written Nigeria to it as the Africa's largest export of oil. How did Nigeria miss it at that point when we, uh, we ought to like, champion that cause and maintain that cause? Because Nigeria stands everything to lose now. Correct. Uh, we we, we self-inflicted ourselves. And you know, when you talk about the oil and gas industry and the volume of production, it has what we call technical implications, economic implications, commercial implications, operational implications, and political implications. As we speak today, I mean, when you, when, when you look at what is happening, I mean, a lot of business climate hostilities are taking place in the Nigerian oil and gas industry, especially within the Niger Delta. We've not been able to pass the, the petroleum industry bill into law. And if you don't have a current procedural standards and laws that will make people to come and contract, nobody will come in. We only needed two ingredients in the PIB, international acceptance and local tolerance. Then when you look at it also, within, within, within us again, Nigeria, before we came out of this uh, JV, joint venture relationships, Nigeria was not really responsible. Mm -hmm. Nigeria was not responsive. As we speak today, and every information I give you is as current as probably an hour ago that I came into your studios, there are no drilling activities going on in Nigeria. And if you don't go into drilling activities and campaigns, how do you build reserves? When you talk about water wells, you talk about aquifers. Mm. But when you talk about oil wells, you talk about reservoirs. Mm. So we are not building new reserves. And the, the production we've been, we've been making or producing, we've been doing what? Depleting the reservoirs. And when you continue to mm. deplete and you are not trying to do something about campaign to build your reserves, definitely you're going to lose your position. Let me put you on hold there. Uh, Mr. Shoumi, let me talk to you about this. It's uh, almost seven billion uh, dollars that the government wants to borrow from China's Exim Bank and uh, five point, just about uh, 5.8 uh, of that should be dedicated to the construction of railway infrastructure in the country. Why borrow from China? Well, it's a case of why borrow from anybody. It's terms and conditions. You know, the, the truth be told, these are economic issues. You borrow from somebody whose conditions are most favorable to you. Um, the other day, it was on CNN, Farid Zakari show, and they were saying that um, China has helped to increase the incidences of human rights infractions within Africa. And the argument of the, um, the show host from the CNN was that there are, when Americans or the Europeans borrow money, they put conditions, some of which are related to human rights indications. But when China borrows its own money, it laxes its restrictions and makes the conditions more favorable. Now, I'm not saying that this loan is such that it's connected with human rights. I'm just giving an example of what was said on TV. The point is that the conditions, the interest rates, and the circumstances with which China offers its loan terms, they are much easier, much more favorable. Well, well, let, let, me, let me butt in here. Uh, permit me to just butt in here. One would think that with all the recoveries made by the government's anti-corruption campaign and anti-corruption agencies, especially the EFCC, uh, one would think that perhaps those recovered monies should have a purpose, perhaps deploy them into infrastructure development and the railways. What do you have to say to that? I'm absolutely certain that it will have a purpose. But first of all, since I have no idea how much has been recovered, and it has not been made known, it would just form within the realms of speculation. It needs to be understood that all the monies that is being recovered are information that is available on social media. And to say the least, that is not reliable. I mean, social media is a place where total falsehood can come on one day and the next day it be held as standard. So until government actually says this is the amount that has been recovered and they give a categorical statement in terms of what they want to do, for now it is mere speculation. And I think uh, we also need to hold on to substance and stop chasing shadows. Yes, government has recovered some amount of money from people, but there needs to be a structured, reliable, and verifiable method of actually knowing what is recovered. Social media is not one of those places mm. to know that. Many thanks indeed. Uh, that's a good place to end it. Olabode Shoumi is an energy and economic expert. Many thanks indeed. And to you too, Zakabala is an economist and an oil and gas consultant for sharing your thoughts with us here on the show.
Boko Haram has, over the past month, carried out attacks on soft targets, including the army posts in the northeast of the country, prompting the question, is the sect in the face of resurrecting after its defeat? The commander of Operation Latvia Dole, Major General Lockyer Rabo, joins me now. I want to thank you so much indeed, and congratulations for those uh, hearty uh, accolades that were poured into you by the U.S. Ambassador to Nigeria. Give us an update on what's happening in the Northeast under your watch. The escalation of violence on soft targets, including your men. Matter of fact, five of them were killed in an attack. And uh, what's happening in the Northeast? Well, thank, thank you very much. Thank you very much, Jimba. Um, Thank you very much, uh, Gimba. Um, first and foremost, let me correct the impression. Earlier on, you indicated that uh, there was um, an ambush. I don't know what you mean by that. We have been on the offensive from 27 Brigade, which is on our three division, as is from Gunari to Manguzum, Tarala, General area. And then that operation has been on for the past uh, 72 hours. So, I do not see that to mean that there is um, an ambush. We went on the offensive to attack Boko Haram where we got um, information that they are gathered. So I think that's something you need to correct. There is not an ambush. So we killed a good number of the Boko Haram terrorists. And indeed, it's even a theater-wide operation. You also recall that um, um, just only yesterday, about 15 of them were killed. We recovered the uh, Ishika gun as well as um, in a good number of uh, general purpose machine guns, AK-47 rifles. Uh, these are, these are, so I don't know where you got your thoughts from. Perhaps yeah. those are the ones uh, who may possibly be wanting to promote the local Iran terrorist activities. Uh, thank you for clarifying that. Thank you so much for clarifying uh, the true position of what really ha happened. But uh, are you aware of a syndicate of suspects supplying terrorists with daily needs from major grade running errands for the terrorists? Are you aware of this development? Of course, I mean, uh, for, for, for Boko Haram to... For Boko Haram to be surviving the way they do, you know that um, there are those who supposedly will be giving them all manner of support. Just only yesterday, two um, suppliers were arrested. Those uh, you know, were considered to be Boko Haram um, you know, logistics suppliers. A few weeks back, we also arrested one in, in Iran, and that was also reported. But uh, I mean, by and large, that is not, that's in my view, it's not um, so, um, uh, something that we did not expect. Of course, we know that there are those who are collaborating with them, and um, they are working hard to ensure that they are out of uh, this kind of things. Major General Lockyer, Rabo, I understand that you're also involved in a very important engagement now. We're going to have to let you go. Many thanks indeed for sharing your thoughts with us. The Theatre Commander, Operation Lafia Dole, rounding up State of the Nation for today. Many thanks indeed for you too being part of the show and to everyone else watching in Nigeria and across the world. I'm Gimba Omar. We're stepping out. Bye for now.